Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I answer 15 common questions about the IELTS exam. I cover everything from exam fees and identification requirements to what you can take into the exam room and retaking IELTS. Don't be caught out by not knowing the facts. Question 1. How much does it cost to take IELTS? Exam fees vary from country to country and test centre to test centre. On the day I'm recording this, which is the 4th of March 2019, I found the example shown on this slide. Your local test centre will be able to tell you the current fees in your country and area. Question 2. What's the minimum age requirement for IELTS? There's no age restriction for the IELTS exam although it is recommended for candidates aged 16 and over. Anyone under the age of 16 will need to submit a minor consent form signed by their parent or guardian in order to take the test. They'll be sent this form automatically when they make their application. Question 3. What identification is acceptable for IELTS registration? An original and current passport is usually the only ID acceptable. EU citizens can use their national ID card instead, but driving licences are not accepted. You must take the same ID along to the exam as you use for registration. If you don't have this with you, you won't be allowed to sit the test. Always check current registration requirements with your test centre as they can change. Also, be sure to arrive for your test in plenty of time to go through the security procedures. At most test centres, a photograph will be taken of you on the day of the exam. This will appear on your test report form as proof of your identity and the form's validity. Question 4. When will I receive confirmation of my test booking? It will take up to 10 business days to process your IELTS application form and check your identity. Online registration is recommended and should take less time. After this, you'll receive email confirmation that your application has been accepted. A more detailed confirmation will be sent to you 5 to 10 business days before your test. It will include the test date, the test centre location, registration time, start time and what you need to bring on test day. You must take a copy of this with you on the exam day. Some centres will only accept a hard copy and not an electronic copy. If you haven't received this email or don't take it with you, you won't be allowed to take the test. Contact your test centre if you haven't received it within five business days prior to your test date. Question 5. How early should I arrive at the test centre? Security procedures can take up to 30 minutes, so it's sensible to arrive at least an hour before the test is due to begin. This will give you plenty of time to be checked in, to use the bathroom and to get settled ready as calmly as possible for the test to start. Feeling rushed will only add to nerves and stress. Question 6. What can I take into the exam room? You are allowed to take in a pen, a pencil and an eraser. You will probably also be permitted a bottle of water, but it mustn't have a label or any writing on it. You must also keep your ID document with you and a hard copy of your test booking confirmation. It's important to note that you must use a pencil to fill in the answer sheet in the reading and listening tests. For the writing test, you can use either a pen or a pencil. Make sure that you take that eraser in in case you make mistakes. You are not allowed to take a mobile phone, wristwatch or any electronic device into the exam room. If you're found with any of these during the exam, you'll be disqualified. There'll be an area for you to leave personal belongings but it may not be secure, so leave valuable items at home. There'll be a clock in the exam room for you to use to see the time. Always 
always check the information provided by your local test centre, as they may have extra rules. Question 7. What happens if I need to postpone or cancel my test? Both the exam date and test location can be changed after registration. There are some restrictions though. You cannot make changes within 14 days, that is two weeks, of your test and there may be a restriction as to how far ahead you can book a new date. You'll also be charged a transfer fee. Again, your local test centre will be able to give you all the details. For cancellations, tests cancelled more than five weeks before confirmed exam dates will be refunded the full fee minus an administration charge. For those cancelled less than five weeks before the confirmed date, the full fee will be charged unless a medical certificate is produced within two days of the test date. In this case, only an administration charge will be deducted. Some test centres require notification up to five days before the test, so do check. There are other exceptional circumstances that are acceptable for postponement or cancellation, but you must be able to prove them. They are loss of a close family member, trauma such as a road accident or being the victim of a crime, and military service. Question 8. What happens if I miss my IELTS exam? You'll only be able to get a refund or rescheduled date for a missed test if you can prove that you had a valid reason for not attending. For example, a medical certificate if you were ill or injured on the day. This must be produced within five days of the test date. Minor illnesses are not considered a valid reason for non-attendance. Other exceptional circumstances are the same as for postponement as listed on the previous slide. Again, you must be able to prove them. Inform the test centre that you'll miss your test as soon as possible. If you arrive late for your exam, you will not be allowed to take it. If you can prove that the circumstances were beyond your control, you may be offered an alternative date for your test without having to pay another fee. Question 9. What support is offered to candidates with disabilities or special needs? Every effort is made to make the IELTS test accessible to everyone and appropriate support for people with additional needs is offered whenever possible. Test centres require three months notice to put special arrangements in place, so notify them of your needs as soon as possible. When you book your test, you'll need to provide a medical certificate issued within the past two years as proof of your needs. Special difficulties for which there should be help available are visual difficulties, hearing difficulties, speaking difficulties and learning difficulties such as dyslexia. Access for candidates with mobility issues will vary between test centres. Your local test centre will tell you if they can easily accommodate you and may recommend a more suitable location for your test if they can't meet your needs. Question 10. Which spelling should I use? UK or US? You can use either UK spelling or American spelling, but you should not use both. Choose one and use it throughout your test. You'll lose marks for incorrect spelling so be careful. Question 11. When and how will I get my IELTS results? The test centre will post out your results 13 days after the test date. They'll come in the form of a test report form. Some centres will allow you to collect your results in person. This might be a good idea if you live at an insecure address. Results cannot be given over the phone or by fax or email, although some centres also offer a preview by SMS alert service so that you can see your results as soon as they are available. However, these results are only provisional and should not be used until you have received your valid test report form. Question 12. 
What information will my test report form show? It will include your overall band score, your score for each of the modules, that's writing, speaking, reading and listening, it will show whether you took the academic or general training exam and it will also record your personal details and the date of your test. This certificate will be valid for two years from the date you took the exam. You'll have to take it again if you need to provide an IELTS certificate after this time period is over. You'll only receive one copy of your form, so keep it safe. If it gets lost or damaged, you won't be issued with a replacement. You can, however, ask for up to five copies to be sent to relevant institutions for application purposes, free of charge. For additional copies, there's a small administration charge. Your results are stored on a database to which institutions have access, so they'll be able to check your results. Question 13. Can I retake the IELTS test? Yes, you can retake it as many times as you want to and as soon as you want. The most likely reason for a retake is because you didn't get the results you needed on the first attempt. But you must resit the whole exam. You can't just retake the parts you got a low score for. Question 14. Is the IELTS exam easier in some countries or at some test centres than others? No, definitely not. IELTS is a standard global test. Questions may vary slightly depending on which country your test centre is located in, but the test and result standards are strictly maintained throughout the world. And finally, question 15. Which institutions and organisations accept IELTS? IELTS is the most widely accepted proof of proficiency in the English language and it's accepted by more than 10,000 institutions and organisations worldwide, including universities, professional bodies, immigration departments and multinational companies. The British Council website has a database of thousands of these. It includes details of minimum band scores each requires and which version of the exam, academic or general training, is preferred. I put a link to this database in the notes below this video. Well, I hope I've managed to answer many of your questions about the IELTS exam. There's lots more information and loads of lessons on my website, ieltsjackie.com, and in my other videos. They're all created to save you time and help you get the best possible results. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.